Hello, everyone. My name is Keith Levison. I am the managing broker for MVP Realty here in the Orlando area. And today we are joined by my polka dot brother and amazing realtor, uh, Neil. And he is a wonderful local realtor. Uh, as always, we'll share his information uh, in the description. But uh, I just wanted to take a moment and Let's first learn a little bit about you. Uh, Neil, where are you originally from? So it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to make it short. Yeah. Um, I was raised in the St. Louis area. Uh, then my dad got transferred to Jacksonville, Florida. And that's how I ended up in Florida. And um, I went to uh, college, University of Florida, got my uh, degree in chemistry. Um, decided I used that for a little while as a chemist. And I realized that was not for me. So while I was doing that, they actually helped me get an MBA. So with the MBA, they actually tell you to have your own business, have your own business, have your own business. So that's what I'm doing. I started my own business. Um, I got a degree at I went to college, went to Houston. And then I started my own business, did it for 33 years, just recently sold my business. And now I'm doing real estate. Wow. That, all right. So, you know, you're going to, I can't let you off the hook that easily. So let's back up. You lived okay. in St. Louis. I, I lived in St. Louis for okay. a while. Yeah. Uh, big question. Um, ha, did you ever have Emo's pizza? No, I didn't. That's and, probably before that. I was probably a little bit older than you are. So I probably did. Okay. That. Yeah, you know, Ema, when when we lived in St. Louis, this was in 2005, okay. Emo's Pizza was huge there. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, I, it just never grew on me. So I was wondering if, you know, you were an Emo's Pizza fan. But I also remember they loved their fried ravioli. And uh, at that time, uh, St. Louis Bread Company, which is now Panera. Yeah, that was there when I was there. I, I was there in the end of 70s, 80s, so it's not before you did. Oh, okay, okay. So you said you had a business that yes. you ended up selling. What was the business? I was an optometrist. Oh, wow. So you were an optometrist and you did that for 30 years. Yep. Um, But you owned your own practice? Yes, I owned my own practice. I had like uh, 25 people working for me. Wow. And then you eventually sold that, stepped away, and moved into real estate. Why? Why make the move? Good question. Um, I did a lot of real estate transactions throughout my life. Uh, and I saw what was good and what was bad. And it really interested me just buying and selling. I did, I did pretty well with it. So I thought I'd learn more about it myself and do it myself. Wow. Okay, cool. So as you've gotten into real estate, are there any areas that you just feel really speak to you? Any, any portions of real estate that you kind of like fell in love with? Well, I've lived in Orlando for 30 years now, so I know the area fairly well. And yeah, basically houses and stuff. I bought some duplexes. I own a commercial building. And then um, I had a, bought a small apartment that I sold, but uh, pretty much uh, uh, single family homes. My, main thing to do wow so though wait so hold on let's back up <laughs> uh because like i feel like you have this amazing background and you're like oh let me just throw this out there yeah, <laughs> i was an optometrist with successful business for 30 years wait no no hold on <laughs> um so you you own a commercial real estate building yes wow and and did you facilitate that transaction? Or? I actually started from the ground up. So I bought the land and I built the building on it. So, Wow. Yeah. And that's that's amazing because uh, commercial real estate is its own beast. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's amazing. And then um, what you're really focused on now, if I, I understood right, you were mentioning is single family homes. Yeah, I'm there later. I've bought and sold a bunch of houses throughout the years, moved in investments and some duplexes and stuff too. But I really enjoy the downtown Orlando area. So that's really my main focus. Oh, wow. Okay. 
downtown. So what draws you to the downtown area? There's just so much to do. Uh, it's convenient. Um, restaurants, shopping. You've got the Dr. Phillips Center, basketball, and you know, this whole thing downtown. It's really nice. Yeah. What about, um, is it uh, the Soto area? Um, I'm pretty close to the Soto area. Um, yeah, there's not a, it's starting to grow there. It's not a huge, huge mm-hmm. thing. It's a nice area to live in. Yeah, definitely. So I'm not that far away from that. As far as restaurants, that is just beginning to become a nice area. Okay. So let me ask you a few questions from maybe a customer perspective. Sure. Let's say I am a individual who is uh, moving with my family. And I really want to be, you know, in in the Orlando area. Uh, I want to have access to basically the life and culture that Orlando has to offer. Um, what areas would you suggest for me to look at? Uh, it depends on what they're looking for. Uh, price range, um, new houses, old houses. There's just a lot of different variables in that position, depending how what they want, what they where they've been, and uh, like I said, if they want to live close to downtown, which I am, it's really convenient. But then the prices go up. But as you get farther out, it gets a little more reasonable. So, mm-hmm. so let's let's deal with the median home price. Uh, according to the Orlando Regional Association of Realtors. Um, what about if we were looking at a median house price of somewhere between four hundred to 600000 Okay, so do they want to live close to Disney? Do they like to live by the parks? Do they want to be downtown with convenient for all the shopping and the and the uh, basketball and the sports that, you know, they could do that? Um, again, Let's see this- downtown. Well, there's, there's condos, there's houses, there's, you know, a variety of stuff. But again, in the medium price range, you're going to be very limited. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, you know, some things that our customers have to understand and, and we help to educate them, right? Yeah. Um, now, what if uh, I was an investor uh, looking to get more of, let's say, a rental type property where would you more like a duplex or a house or yeah let's say a duplex uh again you're limited on duplexes downtown but the farther you go out there might be some availability um again people like to be down by disney because semi area is good for people like to for rentals because there's a lot of vacationers like to go down that area too but again it just depends on what they're looking for so yeah and Kissimmee really is an amazing area uh, I believe recently, um, can't remember if it was Redfin or Realtor.com, but they were talking about the top two counties for investors in Florida. And number one, not too surprising, Miami-Dade County. Yeah. Um, but number two was Osceola County, which oh, is cool. where Kissimmee is located. Yeah. So, sense. yeah, that's a, there are a that's lot of Airbnbs down that area, too. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great area. Um, so where, as you've helped customers, um, you know, in your real estate journey, um, if there was one tip or, you know, your top two tips that you would give a, a potential buyer, um, even a potential seller, in uh our area what what would that be what would those top two tips be good question um probably the main thing is that learn to be patient again there's not a lot of inventory out there so it's just going to be you know it's going to take some time to find something like as far as a seller it's going to be easy they're going to be able to get pretty much the price they want and it's going to be you know easy to do Mm -hmm. so for a buyer it's a little bit more along the lines of needing to be patient right now yeah. in this market. Um, you know, uh, Again, now, a bit, but yeah. yeah. So now for sellers, it, it's true. They, they uh, are going to have a lot more um, of the power, maybe in a negotiation in this market. 
Um, but we've all seen, if you go on any number of websites, homes that sit uh, 150, 180, uh, some of these homes a year, uh, you know, 150 days, 180 days, let me clarify that, not 150 <laughs> years, but 150 days, 180 days, uh, a year long. Um, you know, if you were going to give a seller a, a tip to help them know how to make sure that their home doesn't sit on the market that long, uh, what would you suggest for them? Well, again, in the downtown area houses, it's probably not going to take that long. But yeah, again, if you if it's taking that long, it's probably the price. You probably price it too high. Mm. Really, it's it's pretty much pretty good for sellers, especially a house. Condo is a little bit different, but for a house, it's going to be pretty easy to sell. Mm -hmm. So if they, you know, and I, I I agree, you know, a lot of times we look and it's a property is overpriced. Yeah. That's why we're seeing it sit so long. Um, so, you know, if they, if a seller needs to, um, adjust their, their price, um, what, what do you suggest as far as a good marketing technique after the price adjustment? Well, not even that. It's pretty easy to explain to them why they need a price adjustment because you can go out and the the uh, different, different uh, ways to figure out the prices of, of the houses and you can show them comparables you can mm -hmm. show them what's available it's not hard and i always struggle with that because when i worked with other realtors they were like we're telling me what the price was what the price of value of the houses was i even had a realtor tell me a price of a house i was going to sell like hundred twenty thousand dollars less than i told him it was worth and i sold it in two weeks mm. it's not hard to figure out what the price is we have so many tools to do that so Mm -hmm. pricing it right shouldn't be an issue honestly mm -hmm. so. absolutely so that that's those are some great tips is you know just make sure that if you're a buyer you're being patient and two if you're a seller making sure you you price your property correctly so going forward what do you kind of see for your uh your business what's your what's your business goals here for orlando well, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm still doing some learning. I'm taking some more classes with MVP, but they're a great, great resource for me. And, and uh, so I'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've got a couple of friends that are interested in buying some property again, but we're running in that same constriction. There's not a lot out there. So. Yeah. Inventory is very, very low. And, you know, it's a issue that's being seen all across the country, but buying and selling is still going on yep. uh so you know it's it's up to us to to win that business and to show people that there's a reason why we're professionals and you know i i appreciate that neil you you demonstrate a lot of uh knowledge especially being able to take yourself through such transitions as you've done. So that's, that's awesome. Um, out of curiosity, like I tell it all of our realtors. Um, and if you know, you saw our last video, everybody knows this is the point in time where I encourage shameless plugs and advertisements and pats on the back for MVP Realty. So no, just joking. But seriously, though, out of curiosity, I love asking our realtors, why did you join MVP Realty? So I checked with a couple of different broker brokerages, and um, I really liked one that was um, really friendly. The people were really nice. They had a nice office, and they had no commission brokerage. But they talked about the training. It was very limited. And then I talked to Victor, who's MVP at your company. It was just totally different. You guys had all the training, all the support, and there was no there was no choice. I felt bad at other other places. I told them I was gonna probably work for them, but once I heard about your training, there was there was no there was no no choice. Yeah. And and I understand myself. Um that was one of the big things that that uh brought me to MVP as well. Um they they educated me like I never saw before. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate that as well. Well, before I let you go, Neil, this is your opportunity. Is there anything that you want to tell 
potential customers uh, that are viewing this or even potential agents that might send referrals down to Orlando? Well, if you're looking to buy or sell, I'm the person to use. Uh, I will take the time that 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 you need and to explain the, the process. I'm a really detail-oriented person and I like to show people step by step. I've had a lot of experiences where I didn't really know what was going on. I just kind of went with the flow, but I really want to take the time and help you do your buying or selling uh, process. Yeah. And, you know, I think that speaks to the optometrist in you exactly. because, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, and, and people appreciate that, you know, quite honestly, um, you know, when we're talking about a half a million dollars sale or purchase or a million dollars uh, sale or purchase, um, understanding the process and having somebody who empowers you through that process is just, you know, it can't be beaten. It, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I can assure anyone who's looking to buy or sell, Neil's your guy. He's, uh, he's going to make sure you see clearly Haha, uh -huh, pun. Yeah, uh, I'm a dad. Dad jokes. Dad joke. you know, um, yeah. See clearly what you are buying or selling and the positives or negatives of it. So Thanks that's so much, Keith. That was great. Yeah, thank you. And for all of you who are watching, please uh, like, subscribe, comment, share. It goes a long way towards helping us to provide this content. And really, we love spotlighting our agents and uh, providing informative information. So thank you so much for all of you who've watched it. Remember, Neil's contact information is in the description. Please reach out to him if you're thinking about buying or selling in the Orlando area. Uh, you will not be disappointed. And we hope you all have a great day. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.